What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode with Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise. That's right. Welcome back. What are you doing? This is my video. Actually, you know what? That was pretty good. Tell them what they should go ahead and do. Make sure you like and subscribe at the end of the video. Well, I guess no need to do my intro now because my daughter stole the spotlight on that one. So there you go. But anyways, guys, two short weeks here until we get to see St. Louis Sentinels playoff football. Maybe three weeks, right? If we could snag that first round by. And taking a look at the playoff picture as of right now, we do still have the number one seed. But interestingly enough, the Dallas Cowboys have now snuck their way into the playoffs as the sixth seed on the heels of a four game win streak. Remember, they were on the outside looking in for the longest. And as of right now, they are in there. So we're looking to play spoiler and they're looking to climb the uh, seedage, if you will, in the NFC side of things. Seahawks and Falcons also only one game behind us as well. So we got to make sure we take care of business today. Really, really want that first round by as every team does heading into the playoffs. And we got a rivalry rematch going on today. And we have historically played well against the Dallas Cowboys. And today, Coach Small says, let's go, fellas. They're going to be looking for revenge. So let's stay focused, play the way we're capable of. And once again take care of business and Andrew Wiley said something that I just completely disregarded because it's Andrew Wiley Aww. but basically just got to rinse and repeat complete the sweep of the Cowboys but the Cowboys will have plus five to break tackle and plus five to play rec Cowboys always play good in Madden regardless so got to make sure we are locked in and laser focused today we were apparently able to throw the ball at will in our last win and we have to be excited about the offensive lines play and we are uh you know as coach small says here we don't get enough credit for the job they do up front and it all starts with them yes indeed it does they're a crucial part of our success so the amount of sacks that we allow against the Cowboys will determine how much XP each offensive lineman earns. I mean, whatever. I'm really more looking for them to open up some holes with the running game with Dudley because he is playing a pretty, pretty good football as of late. And we definitely want to keep that going with him. Take a look at the Sentinels player stats here as the season winds down. See how our boys have done so far in year number three of the franchise. How about J.J. Ford? Hasn't played in three weeks, but still having a great season. Over 4,200 passing yards, 34 touchdowns to only seven picks. To put that in perspective, Sam Howell has played as a starter now for two and a half weeks. He has nearly as many picks as Ford. So that doesn't tell you the importance of having a great quarterback. Nothing else will. Dudley having a great season as well. Over 1,000 yards with still two games to go. And how about those 16 touchdowns? You love to see it. That might be good for first place in the NFL. Dwight Jackson starting to uh, play a bigger role now than he did at the beginning of the season. Not a lot of attempts, but average of 4.5 yards per carry. I will certainly take that. And getting a look at our receivers here, Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel. Just putting together phenomenal seasons, especially Terry he could easily go over 1,600, 1,700 uh, if these last two games are fruitful for him. And the 12 touchdowns, amazing. Curtis flirting with 1,300, should get that today, I would imagine. And also seven touchdowns as well. Bart Burns, not quite at 1,000, but the nine touchdowns, you love to see it. And even our role players like George Williams, John Dotson, uh, Dudley Saxton, doing pretty good in the receiving game. All around, our receiver core is freaking stacked. Our two-year pro, Justin Hayward, leading the team in tackles. Love to see that from a Mike linebacker. And look at all these TFLs, guys. Jonathan Allen leading our team, or I should say tied with James Smith-Williams. No surprise there. That is what Jonathan Allen does for a living. He lives in opposing teams' backfields. Justin Hayward, though, with 14. That's great. Chase Young with 12. Jamin Davis with 11. So we're definitely uh, shutting down the run game. And sacks, not a whole heck of a lot. But how about James Smith Williams? Yes, you heard me correctly. Leading our team with nine. Hayward, I mean, Hayward, he should get a dev upgrade, I would think. Uh, has to, right? He should go to superstar next season. He's got five and a half. John Allen's got five, but he did miss some time. Jamin, four and a half. Chase Young, need Ooh. to see more out of him for sure. But all around, I mean, it's not great, but at least it's consistent. I'll tell you what is great, though. Nine interceptions for Emmanuel Forbes. Four for Kendall Fuller and two for Jartavius Quan Martin. 
Would like to see some other guys in the fray as well, especially this gentleman right here, Tony Hoover. He really, I would say, <laughs> he's been a bust. I'm, I'm just going to be honest. He has been a bust, but uh, the guys that are contributing are doing so at a high level. And in terms of the entire NFL, J.J. Ford hasn't played in three weeks, and he still leads the NFL in passing yards. Mahomes is probably going to pass him today, unfortunately. And he also leads the, t leads the league in passing touchdowns as well. So had J.J. not gotten injured, man, he would have been on par for a historic season. And uh, Dudley Saxton, though, fourth in the league in rushing yards. Let's see if he's first in touchdowns. He is. How about that? He should get a dev trait upgrade uh, next season or when the Super Bowl comes around for sure. Terry leading the league in receiving yards and Curtis Samuel is number three. So that is awesome to see. Terry getting beat out though on the touchdowns by Tyler Boyd, but maybe he can jump him in today's game. You never know. So that is awesome to see. And getting a look at the defense, got to go to the NFC because Madden still hasn't fixed that glitch where you cannot, like if you go to NFL stats, you're not going to see your guys uh, you know, if they're leading, but Emmanuel Forbes does lead. See if he leads the entire NFL. I'm sure he does. He does by three. So that's awesome. Emmanuel Forbes leading the league in interceptions. James Smith Williams kind of up there uh, with the sacks and then TFLs. Yeah, we're not. Uh, Jonathan Allen did miss some time though. So had he not, I'm sure he would be leading the league in TFLs, but still all around our guys look good. Our stats look good. And if we could secure this number one seed today, probably would just sim out next week and go straight to the playoffs. But we got to see what happens first against the Cowboys. Upgrades here for a couple key guys. James Smith Williams, we just talked about leading our team in sacks and also tied for TFL. He uh, run stopper. I mean, he's a power rusher. So I know that's going away from the scheme. But still, I mean, he's already doing great. He's going to get plus two to power moves and even plus one to finesse moves as well. So that's pretty good. And then Dwight Jackson, I also mentioned he has had more of a role here. Uh, you know, Dudley's still primary target, of course, getting most of the reps. But Dwight Jackson, he's, he's showed me some flashes. He's a power back, but I'd like to get him a little bit better in that elusive department. And then we'll probably just continue to pump the rest of the stats into power. Plus one to Juke Move was hoping for a little speed upgrade, but that did not happen. But it is what it is, and I will still take it. So a big... Big game today, guys, as they all are, but Cowboys on a four-game win streak. Maybe if we win today and the, uh, what was it, the Falcons and the Seahawks, they lose, we could square up that number one seed. So if you guys are fired up for some more St. Louis Sentinels content, please like the video and subscribe. You gotta subscribe. My daughter, my 10-year-old daughter told you to at the beginning of the video. She makes the rules, not me. So you gotta subscribe now. But without further ado, guys, let's get on down to Sentinels Field and get ready for the game. Sentinels defense gonna be put to the test here first as Tressway boots it back. And, you know, regardless of what I said, you know, we have pretty much dominated the Cowboys. I think they've only beat us once or twice, but it's the Cowboys. They got tons of superstars. It's the usual suspects that we, you know, that you guys all know. And, oh, my God, Tress Way, our punter, just got hurt. Yikes. That's not a good thing because we don't carry two punters. Most teams don't. So uh, he was holding his wrist there as long as his, his foot's okay. That'll be good. And Tony Pollard getting a nice carry, his inaugural carry of the game. Good for about nine or ten. And did he just punch my man Forbes? Come on now, Pollard. Let's keep it clean, brother. Don't want to have to get uh, Sentinel security out there on you. I did see him throw a punch, but did pick up nine. So good way for the Cowboys and their offense to start. Prescott coming out shotgun with Pollard behind him. Going to be a give. And look who's there to meet him and shut him down. That's Jonathan Allen. He now definitely holds the TFL leader on our team. Uh, Tressway won't come back, so it looks like Joey Sly going to be double duty, kicking and punting the ball today. Third and three, they got to fullback Andy Janovich in there, so probably going to be a, a run to Pollard, you would think. It is, and we just barely, barely uh, almost shut him down there behind the line to gain, but Pollard was able to get it. So nice uh, pick up there for Dak and the Cowboys keeping their offense out here on the field. Now, we're yet to really see the passing game too much, and we know that uh, Dak Prescott, whatever you want to say about him, he definitely has the ability to carve us up. And, oh, my God, 
Great defense there by Quan Martin because C.D. Lamb almost had a huge gainer on that one. Yeah, the Cowboys can definitely turn it on at any given time, so don't got to worry about the past. All we care about is the present. It's another breakup uh, that time Forbes. Feel like he got punched by Tony Pollard and he that kind of fired him up. He's like, screw this. No, I'm the NFL leader in interceptions and I'm going to start playing like it now. So on third and 10 here, I think press man with the blitz. That seems to be our bread and butter as of late. Pollard, ah, oh, man, that's a great catch and a completion there by Jake Ferguson. All right, so the Cowboys moving pretty good here on their first drive. They're into our territory now. Nice play fake. I bit for sure. And that is going to be Michael Gallup getting the first down. Of course, uh, signed with the Raiders in real life as an unrestricted free agent. But he's still here on this team, and he just made a big, big play for his Cowboys getting this to the 30-yard line of the Sentinels. I think we're going to guess pass on this one. Confident this is going to be a Prescott throw, and it's a play fake. Okay, I was about to say I'm always wrong, and there's Gallup wide open. Okay. It's a very, very easy drive. They only faced adversity a couple times, a couple third downs, and we were not able to get them off the field. It's all right, though. You know, sometimes games start like that, and we got to figure it out at halftime. And uh, as long as we match them, you know, we don't want to let the Cowboys get up by 14 or 21. That could be night-night time for us if that happens. As long as we come down here, score, even a field goal, uh, I'll still feel pretty confident about this one. Sam Howell, though, what are we going to see today? He's definitely done his thing in terms of yardage, but just has thrown a lot of picks. And like I said, if we do win this game today, a couple ifs here. If we do win this game today, and if we do somehow clinch the number one seed, I will not play any of my starters next week. J.J. Ford is slated to come back next week. But uh, and I'll probably just end up simming that one, I would imagine, because your boy is ready to get to the playoffs. Look, we made it all the way to the NFC championship last year, and I believe it was these very Cowboys. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's been a while since that happened. I believe it was these very Cowboys that knocked us out. Right. I have to go back and look. I don't know. Regardless, though, what I'm saying is I'm ready to get to the postseason. Dudley on the draw. He's got a little space. He's running good, picks up a first down, starting out averaging six yards per carry on the ground. Terry on the press, but if they were single high safety, it would be all bad. Um, ah, I should. Why are you the way that you are? I've done that. Yeah, see? Shouldn't have done that, man. I was uh, locked in on that's Floyd Anderson, the two year pro out of Florida, and uh, I should have let that one go. I know, I know. There was, There's no sense in doing that when they got safety help. If they press me with no safety help, that's a different story. That time they had it, and I'm just kind of stuck in my ways because that that press has been hitting so well for us as of late. Uh, but that's okay. Second and down here. We're coming out shotgun, and Terry might have this. Well, if that was J.J. Ford back there in the backfield slinging it, might have. But uh, it's overthrow by Sam Howe. Third and ten here, Sam. Let's see what you got in the tank, brother. Um, You might have Terry or you might have a pick. That's the same exact guy that we just talked about, Floyd, Floyd Anderson. He was a fourth-round pick back in 2024. And Sam is <laughs> doing what Sam Howe does best, unfortunately. Uh, he's played good, you know. I think that he's secured his role as our backup, but we've just seen way too many picks since he entered the mix. Might see a pick there for Tony Hoover. Of course not. He doesn't do that. Oh, no. He's a cornerback that does not pick the ball off. See if we can get some more pressure here. Going to use her up on Cam Curl. See where Tony Pollard goes. He is running a route. Uh -huh. It's my mistake. Yep, that's my mistake there. Okay. Thought Tony Pollard might be back there blocking again. He was not, and uh, Cam Curl had to go the entire length of the field just to stop him on that wheel route, so that is rather unfortunate. Got to watch the outside run here because I could see Pollard going away from the blockers. He will not. It's actually going to be a play fake, and there you go. Peyton Hendershot, so both tight ends scoring now. And I believe I said earlier, I don't want to go down 14-0 to the Cowboys. We don't want to let the Cowboys get up by 14 or 21. Guess what? We're down 14-0 to the Cowboys. I think we got to go screen here. Just get a completion under our belt, at least. Because right now, we don't even have that. And that is going to be a completion. Thought I could slip through the two blockers there. Wasn't really able to do it too well. 
and that's gonna bring up third and six so what do we do here that's the question just something i think safe a safe completion maybe a drag route here with uh curtis samuel he loves he loves those we'll send terry up the seam as well and really got to pick this up guys samuel on his delayed route should have it thank you let's just get out of bounds no chance in fumbling it that would be absolutely disastrous but finally we're able to get this thing to midfield second and eight here now about three minutes to go until the end of the quarter let's uh see if we can get big old george williams involved look at that wow that was a great catch thought trayvon diggs might actually have a play on that ball he was very close, but George Williams is able to haul it in. Ball's on the 31 now. Let's go Dudley on the outside. I did make uh, running it outside my focus. Oh, my God. What a great block set there. And Dudley going to score. Ricky Stromberg gets injured during the play. But how about that? That was Larry Jenkins, who we don't hear too much from. Number 72. Where's he at? I think that was. Was that Larry Jenkins? No, it wasn't. I don't think. Or was it? Might have been. That it is Jenkins. Okay, you guys got to see this, this pancake, man. He literally planted Trayvon Dig. He clotheslined him, Undertaker style or Kane style, and that is what ultimately sprung Dudley in for the touchdown. And he set a second block too. Wow, that was a great play by Larry Jenkins. Pretty good play by Dudley too, and that was clutch to respond. So first and ten now out of. The single back, and God, these tight ends are carving us up. That's freaking Peyton Hendershot, man. Dak already at 133 with two touchdowns, and we still got two minutes to go before the end of the first. So I am not liking the way that this game is starting out. I can certainly, certainly tell you that. Got to make some something happen. Got to make some noise here. The only person making some noise are these tight ends. Their number one tight end, Luke Schoonmaker, not even here. It's the two backups that are causing all the havoc. Cowboys could put up 40 at this rate, maybe even more. I don't know, but they everything they're doing seems to be working. Okay. They're about to go up 21-7, by the way. And uh, I just, I, that's what did I say at the beginning? The Cowboys can do this. And now Dak's got his X Factor on, too. The Cowboys can certainly do this. We haven't really seen it too much in this series, but we're seeing it today. And if we, if our defense can't figure it out, figure out what's going on here, make some changes, it ain't going to matter how well our offense plays. They're going to put up like 60. Okay, so 177 passing yards for the Cowboys. Going to need to change that. I made defend the deep pass my game plan. So I might have to think about switching it to maybe I feel like the medium pass maybe is what uh, what Dak's really been having his way with so far. I don't I mean, he's been having his way with everything, really, if you ask me. But uh, anyways, let's see if Dudley can find this little gap here. Got to watch Leighton Vander Esch. So nice block set on him. Dudley, he's running good. He's got 53 yards and, of course, that big touchdown. Most importantly, picks up the first down. Try a little rollout here on second and 12. Want to try to get Terry going with an accurate ball. That could be there. I won't really put the blame on Sam too much. He had to throw out of the sack on that one, you know, which is always hard to do. And here we are again in third and 12. Last time we were in this, we called the exact same play because the coach always calls it. Didn't work. And I might just have to have tunnel vision on McLaurin for this one, or maybe George. That ball's not accurate. And it's picked again there by Donovan Wilson, the safety. George was open. He was open, and it was not a good ball from Sam. Well, if I could show you guys the correct angle. So look, there's George. He's open. I'm trying to fit it, trying to lead it underneath and kind of fit it right around that, uh, between the, about the 45 yard line there. And Sam throws it way out of range. I mean, I guess it was not terrible, but definitely an overthrow. I even tried to aggressive catch it too. George Williams turns into a defender on that one. And if we had JJ in that dots X factor, we would not be seeing that. And here's the thing. I could live with our defense or our offense not playing great, but we can't stop him on defense at all. There goes Pollard. It's been a while since we've seen this. Justin Sutton, though. The former second round pick, I want to say, 
tackle here on the Cowboys. He gets down. All right, I'm going to use her on Hayward. Going to assume that it's going to be a give to Pollard, which it will be, but that time, okay. Chase Young and others. Tony Knight was back there. Cam Curl as well. And this is the crucialist of crucial third downs here. We really, really have to get them off of the field. If they pick this up, I am just, I'm not going to know what to do with life. I'm going to question life. Oh, it's gonna, that's actually a run. No, it's a play fake, and there we go. I was all discombobulated, and Jamin Davis came to save the day. So the first real signs of life that we've seen from this defense, forcing Braden Mann to come out and punt it. And could this be the tide that we need to turn in the Sentinels' favor? It's a good punt. Going to be starting this drive from the 16-yard line. All right, Sam, you got to settle in, brother. I'm about ready to bring in the pastor, not who we signed, if you guys... Remember that. Dudley's got tons of room. There we go. All right. That's good. Let Sam see some chunk plays, even if it's not him doing all the work, even if it's Dudley doing all the work or Dwight Jackson or whomever. Just let him see some chunk plays happen, and maybe that will help him to settle in a bit. Oh, God. Free rusher into the backfield. That's DeMarvian Overshone forcing a loss of two. I think it's time to call it. PA cross, single back, X bunch, nasty, yeah. It's my once per play game, as you guys know, and this is the time to use it. We got to take advantage of that punt from the Cowboys and pay this thing off with some points. There's Curtis. He might house it. Will he? No, he won't. Defenders are there to meet him, but that's a huge, huge gainer. And I just felt like, oh, no, I, okay. I, not calling it again. Don't worry. I pressed the button too fast. I only call that play once per game, as you guys know. So just going to have to audible this into a Saxton run. I ain't trying to be out here cheating. Oh, vicious juke. Vicious juke on Leighton Vander Esch. And that ended up being a good play as Dudley picks up seven. Dudley on the outside here seems like a good idea. It worked well early. Oh, look at Larry Jenkins. They're setting blocks again. Okay, Larry Jenkins. Let's talk about this guy. He was a low round draft pick. Think maybe sixth round, possibly fifth round. Ricky Stromberg getting hurt out of Temple. Left tackle. Never was a, he was actually a hidden dev, okay, when I drafted him, but never really got it going. He lost his dev trait, so I never really talked about him too much. Larry Jenkins. You guys probably don't even know who that is unless you're a, a diehard St. Louis Sentinels watcher. But I'll tell you what, he is like a chef at IHOP cooking up some pancakes today. See if we can pay this thing off with some points, finally. Ah, uh, Terry, should I do it? I am so sick of Sam Howell. Again, Terry was open. And uh, I'm making the call now. Okay. Joshua Dobbs, the pastronaut. He's coming in for Sam. Yep, like I said, man, the things you just don't see with J.J. Ford. You just don't see it. They're coming out in their goal line set. And, oh, Cam Curl pushing Pollard back. I guess forward progress means he only lost one. I swear, though. Swear that was pretty close to a safety. And I'll tell you what, if we can get a safety, wow. How big would that be? Yeah, that would be huge. Absolutely huge. See if we can make it happen. I'm sure it's going to be a Pollard run again. And that's going to be a false start. That is going to be a false start. I'm going to back this thing up to the one yard line. Safety could really also turn this thing around too. Might I add, got to watch for a pass or a play fake though. I could, could see that happen. I'm going to bring Cam down. Somebody get Pollard. Thank you. Okay. A little bit of breathing room for the Cowboys, but that will be a big third and eight. I am pressing up with the Blitz, hoping somebody can get... Oh, a bat down! That was Jamin Davis, I think. I believe so. Somebody came up to bat that ball down. He might have had his uh, tight end again. Look at Jamin with the Dikembe Mutombo-like swat. Okay, so the Cowboys are giving us chances. Sam Howell is selling big time. So now we are going to see Joshua Dobbs, the pastronaut. Can he do what he did for Minnesota when he first came in for them? Uh, oh, John Dotson, nice move. Okay. Going to get us some pretty good field position. And even though we got Josh Dobbs, number 15, I would say this is probably going to be a heavy dose of our running backs because um, I'm not really sure what 
Josh Dobbs brings to the table. I'll be honest with you. So hopefully Dudley and these running backs, he's continuing to find space. A mere inches away from the line to gain. But Dudley is at 10 for 72. How about that? Dudley on the draw, going to run behind our center, Will Devlin. Dudley, do not fumble. That would be very, very bad indeed. And I cannot believe, with three interceptions, <laughs> that this is uh, potentially could be a one-score game. That is, that is something. That is something right there, I'll tell you. And we're going to go ahead and run away from the blocks on this one. Got to ID up that linebacker as the mic. Uh, okay. So the outside run isn't working too well, even though we made it our focus. Green to Dwight Jackson here. Coach called it. So I'm definitely rolling with it. Give me some blockers, guys. Okay, Dwight has some room to operate. Bobby Brown tried to uh, pull us backwards, but Dwight did fight forward. We did get the ball. No, we get the ball after halftime, too. Okay, that's great. So this could be a potential double dip scenario. So we definitely want to pick this up with Dwight. Dwight gets it. He might go all the way. He does. Okay. Hey, I'm not going to leave points on the, on the table. Kind of wish he would have gotten tackled, you know, short on the one yard line. Giving us time to milk some more of that clock. But that was big. And even with all the first half mistakes, I'm I'm going to put most of the blame on Sam. Not going to lie. I have no problem admitting when I make dumb passes. But I feel like the, the passes that were intercepted, receivers were open on all of them that I can think of. But anyways, despite Sam Howe trying to sell this game, it's only a one-score game. But we do got a minute and a half to try to keep the Cowboys from marching down the field. Going to stay zone again. Probably drop out one of these defensive ends here like Fowler. Just give a little extra coverage on the outside. Forbes, great defense. He was targeting Gallup again. Forbes got fingertips on the football. That's a big third down coming up. Zone's been working, so I am not going away from it at all. Let's see what Prescott does. It's going to be a gift to Pollard, as a matter of fact. And we're going to call a timeout. We are going to call a timeout. Now we got a minute and 16 seconds to march downfield. And our defense has been stepping up after that disastrous first quarter. I can tell you that much. But now we're going to really have to see what uh, good old Joshua Dobbs has in store. Because we're going to try to march downfield and put together a score of our own. See if we can do it. Number 15 back there, primed and ready. Let's see what he has. We're going to go underneath to George. That was an accurate ball. Wasn't a high degree of difficulty, but it was an accurate ball. And I realize the clock is ticking here. Still got uh, all two timeouts. And don't really want to necessarily have... I want this clock to bleed down as much as possible. So that's why I'm not really in uh, any hurry to snap this. Probably should have hit Bart Burns. I think he was open. Tried to hit Samuel, and it's now third and two. Coach is saying draw. I like it. Feel like, uh, don't really like the fact that they're in there. Well, they're 4-3, uh, 3-4, four, three, three, four, yeah. Um, Dudley, come on. Pick it up. Oh, could not outrun the defender. Yeah. Gonna have to punt. Gonna have to punt here. Didn't really, uh, I said we were gonna give give uh, Josh Dobbs a chance to, to display what he's got. Didn't really give him... Too many opportunities there. And that took virtually no time off the clock. That's a terrible punt. Remember, Joey Sly is punting the ball. We don't have Tress Way in this one. So now we got to stop the Cowboys from scoring again. And hopefully, as long as we don't allow them to get into field goal range here, we'll get into the locker room. Chance to double dip still. Pollard trying to change that. And the Cowboys are going to burn their last time out. So now they would really, really need to... Either get out of bounds or run up and spike it. Don't really see the CPU spiking the ball too much. We got our big quarter defense out here this time. So Dak may be able to find some soft spots in the coverage. Nope. That should take us to halftime with only 15 seconds left to go. 21-14. Surprised that that is the score. Dallas started out so hot. 183 passing yards. But our defense really stepped up. And this is going to be the Joshua Dobbs show for the second half. I talked about Sam. He needs a contract extension. And I thought that he was going to you know, be our guy. Um, I don't know. He might have just took a little bit of backslide today. Now, Dak, yeah, it was the medium pass. I'm kind of scared to do that, though, because we lose linebacker and DB run support. 
But as long as I'm manning up on one of those players, should not be too much of a worry. Um, but chance to go down here and tie. Would have loved to score again. Before ha Again, you know, before halftime, we did score once, but not twice. But still a game. Josh Dobbs, the keys are yours, my friend. See how you drive this one. Start out with the pass here. Want to see if we can get Josh Dobbs locked in. Somebody's... Oh, that might have actually been worse than Sam. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That was pretty bad. So hopefully that was just a, you know, a little, little nervousness. A little nervousness on behalf of Josh Dobbs, hopefully. Now Terry's getting pressed. We'll see what that... Uh, I wish there were single high safety, man. Curtis, I need you on a drag. I'm going to look at Terry. Maybe that safety drops down. He kind of did. Josh, can you hit him? Tell you what, man, this Floyd Anderson cat, two-year man out of Florida, he's playing really good coverage. Uh, Josh, not really feeling too fluid with the football. Let's put Terry on a curl. Bart Burns might be my primary read. Nope, we're going to go to Terry, and that's an accurate ball. Okay, not mad at that at all. Terry on the curl, nice coaching adjustment by me and we do move the chains gonna go te attack on second and nine probably not gonna roll out with micah parsons there that would probably spell disaster or maybe we still maybe we still can we got bart burns oh my god had him there getting open i did try to roll out with dobbs and uh result was not pretty terry getting pressed again can he win that's the question if not Maybe Bart Burns be my second option here. Um, he really didn't win, and Bart going to have to fight for it. Yeah, that one was probably on me. Trayvon Diggs going to pick it off. And I really, really wish we had J.J. Ford back, guys. That one was, I would say, out of the four, yes, count them, four interceptions that I have thrown today. That was the only one that I can kind of be like, all right, that was just not a good read by me. Um, but... The other ones, I think it was all Sam, but we just cannot figure out this passing game, unfortunately, and uh, we're kind of going to need to. Dak almost got sacked. Going to go ahead and go back to Jake Ferguson there for a nice pickup of seven. Also, it's not helping that Terry's not winning on press, which he usually does. Nice defense there. Tony Hoover getting in the backfield. Can we get the Cowboys off the field here on third and one? That is the question. We're going to go. What's been working the most is zone. I'm going to go press with the blitz, though, because I don't know. I just have a good feeling about it. Uh, we'll go ahead and use her up on Cam Curl here to guard Tony Pollard. It might be a run to Pollard. It is, and we're there to shut it down with Hayward and Jonathan Allen. Now, Evan McPherson is their kicker. He should. Oh, wow. they're going to go for this. What? Wow. They're going to go for this. All right. Okay. See what happens here. I'm bringing in the dime package. Going to bring in the dime package. Guess and pass. See if it's maybe a screen to Pollard. It is not going to be. And it's an errant pass by Dak. Wow, are we dodging bullets here. Staying in the game. Do we just only run the football? Like, maybe we should. Maybe we should not throw another pass for the rest of this game. That doesn't seem very realistic. And, oh, my God. Now, why is James Smith-Williams in the backfield? I'm calling a freaking timeout, man. What is going on here? with my freaking defenders being in the backfield. All right, come on, Dudley, show me something. I really need your brother. Oh, can someone please block Malik Hooker? I mean, it was a good effort by Dudley. Yes, picking up two, but one block on Malik Hooker and that one could have been gone. I really need uh, Josh Dobbs though to complete a pass. Like that would be lovely. This is your, <laughs> oh my God, dude. These quarterbacks suck. I might have to, uh, I'm bringing back Sam. I know this is crazy, but like Josh Dobbs, his passes just feel terrible. We have Bart Burns wide open on that one, wide open, and his his passes just yeah, they don't feel good. They do not feel good. Terry, if you can hear me right now, I need you to win on press. Can you do that? You are maybe gonna do that. Thank you. Oh, he was so overdue for that. Oh, my God. Donovan Wilson Donovan Wilson, going to catch us. I have been looking and looking and looking for that press all freaking game. And Josh Dobbs may have <laughs> overthrew that. So Sam is getting his chance at redemption. I know you got three picks. But I'll tell you what. If you, can if you can win this game for us, Sam, 
I will extend your contract next episode. I promise you. Dudley, I need you to... Okay, he's got it. Tie ball game. That is right. Tie ball game, 21 all. Really due to our defense. Not going to lie. And I didn't think I'd be saying that, you know, when the first quarter was going on. Our defense was basically non-existent. But our defense has stepped up. They've made some plays. Sam Howell came back in and hit Terry on a deep shot. And we got a zero ball game now, guys. Now let's see how Dak and the boys respond here. We know they can do that. It's going to be a play fake. And that's a great catch by Brandon Cooks. I feel like that's like the first really kind of deep shot that we've seen Dak hit since the first quarter. I could be wrong. I typically am in life, but I don't know. It's just first quarter we were seeing that all the time. Haven't really seen it too much as of late. Dak going to send his fullback the other way. It's going to be another play fake. And that, oh, God, missed the tackle there on Andy Janovich. You got to be kidding me. He called it out of the flat. We missed the tackle. He picks up a first down. See what Dak does here. Uh, we got pressure in the backfield. Pollard going to get tackled there. And he started off good as well. I haven't seen any too much from him as of late either. And really, zone coverage has been the answer. So we're going to go ahead and do that been working for us on these third down situations Dak gonna scramble you gotta be kidding me fumble it force a fumble Jamin Davis tried to punch it out but Prescott does pick it up and keeps this drive going unfortunately Dak loves having his fullback Janovich in he's a good one former Cleveland Brown you know so I've watched him play quite a bit and oh thought that could be a pick opportunity there Prescott throwing some errant passes we saw him do that on that fourth down play earlier did it there as well and until i need to not do this i'm gonna i'm gonna continue being in zone coverage i just i feel the most comfortable with it at least in this one and it's gonna be a catch by brandon cooks starting to call his name a lot another big third down coming up switch things up a little bit here with the press blitz and we'll see if pollard gets this ball he is will he get shut down he will not tony hoover almost had him Pollard only needed one, got about one and a half on that one. So, unfortunately, uh, Cowboys having their best drive here of the second half. But it's okay because we tied the ball game up on our last drive. So, that makes it a lot easier for us. And that's a nice catch there by CeeDee Lamb. Going to go out of bounds. And the Cowboys got the ball on the 10-yard line. Go ahead and send a little pressure here at Prescott. See if it gets home. Pressure didn't get home, but Jonathan Allen got home to Tony Pollard. So, I guess the pressure did get home. I mean, you can't really pressure a running back, but you guys understand what I'm saying. We freaking tackled him for a TFL, okay? That is what I'm saying. Back to our zone, though. We go out of the nickel, and Pollard is going to be to lined up to Dak Prescott's right. We'll see where Dak goes with this. Got to watch the scrambling opportunity. And if we can hold him to a field goal here, that'll be a huge win because that will give us a chance to march down the field and either tie it or take the lead, which was highly, highly improbable uh, not too long ago. So let's see if we can get it done here. It's going to be, wow, nice play fake. I was about to say a Pollard run. Did not, doesn't matter because he was out of bounds. And there you have it. Going to force a Evan McPherson field goal. And we got the chance to go down and potentially take the lead or tie it. Just don't throw an interception, please. That's, that's like, I'm hoping and praying right now. Because I can't tell you the last time in this franchise that I've thrown four picks. The last time is now because that has happened today. Dudley approaching 100 yards here in this game. And for the most part, he's been our offense. Aside from uh, some flashes. <laughs> no, not Josh Dobbs or Sam Howell really. That last drive, okay, was pretty good. But Dudley's been the main man today and going to be stopped short there little bit by the defender and that's going to bring up third and two got to pick this up here man this is our chance do not want to waste it curtis oh slightly out of his grasp oh man that could have been it right there you got to punt the ball definitely can't go for it in this part of the field or maybe i should have because i forgot we got joey sly back there punting the ball not tress way you have to figure that out too if tress way you know, a, a punter is oftentimes forgot about on a roster until you need him. And when you don't have him, boy, howdy, does his position become important. So we'll check on Tress after this game. But 
We might have to go sign somebody. Uh, I don't want Joey Sly putting the ball. Pretty good kicker for us. Not a good punter. So here we go. Now we got to make sure that the Cowboys don't score and burst this thing wide open. Worst case scenario, a field goal. But we should be in store for a fun and exciting fourth quarter. 24-21, passing yards. We got 202, believe it or not. And the rushing game has been hitting. So assuming that uh, we get a chance to, you know, to tie or take the lead, probably going to lean on the run a bit more than the pass, but it'll be situational football. You know, we're going to have to see first and foremost what the Cowboys do on this drive. I'm going to use her up on my safety cam curl, hoping that this is a run. It is not, and it's going to be a sack. Justin Hayward adding to his totals. We saw his stats pregame, and I really think that he should get a dev upgrade at the end of the season. Not sure if he's going to, uh, but I really, really think he should. He definitely deserves it. And let's see if we can get the Cowboys off the field here and get yet, yet another chance, which we've gotten chance after chance after chance. Here comes Fowler. Dak was looking, looking, surveying, surveying, and never found an opportunity. And we indeed are going to get a chance to tie or take the lead again. All right, Sam, come on, man. I know I benched you, but I brought you back. So I need you to please Please do something. Nice catch by Bart Burns. That was a high degree of difficulty there. Um, Could have easily seen that being a pick as well. But luckily it was not. We're going to go back to the draw concept here with Saxton. If that safety wasn't up there, I probably would audible to a press. But I'm not going to. And just no blocking at all whatsoever. Third and five. And we convert a third down. That is the question. Haven't been able to as of late, but we are going to do that underneath to George Williams. Yeah, I know the stats don't look pretty. And I'll tell you what, Sam, you got a chance to get the most important stat in the book. That's a win. See if he can do it. Second and five, though, we're moving and driving, which I do love to see. Terry's open on the outside, and the pass is accurate enough. Wasn't the prettiest pass in the world, but it gets the job done. Terry now at four for 89, so you love to see that from him. And I think we try to go probably outside with Dudley again. Curtis Samuel, though, maybe. I'm going to go ahead and audible this. I know may not be the smartest thing in the world, but I feel like Curtis might win. Can I? Why can I not? Okay. I'm going to get a delay game. I'm going to get a delay game. No, I'm not. Curtis is going to get it. All that I know took way too long. I was pressing wrong buttons. The thought process was there and the pass was converted. And now I think we lean on Saxon as much as possible. He's close to go. He's over 100 yards now. George Williams gets hurt. That one kind of stings. Not going to lie. He's played really good today. So, yeah, okay. Tight end attack it is. Uh, tried this earlier. Didn't work. I'm going to try to possibly roll out depending on no I'm not because Micah Parsons is there Bar Burns might have it there we go baby okay okay that is our first lead of the ball game the Cowboys had 21 points in the first quarter and have only had three aside from that so I mean hey doesn't matter how we get to the promised land as long as we get there and right now, we are up by four. Defense has come alive in the second half. I'm going to need them to keep that same energy now. I'll tell you what, regardless of what happens in this one, though, this has been a fun, fun game. And obviously hoping for the win, yes. But if something crazy happens and we don't get it, I, I've seen a lot today. I've, I've seen a lot. Pollard on the outside. Can we get to him? Manuel Forbes, thank God, because Quan Martin got pancaked six ways to Sunday. We're able to limit Pollard to a gain of two. Going to go back to zone again. That's what I have felt most comfortable with here in the second half. And it's what I believe has worked the most. That's going to be Michael Gallup. He's having a pretty good game and he gets injured. Got zone here, this time with a blitz. Don't know if I really like this call, uh, but we're rocking with it. Anyways, Pollard, he's looking for tack, looking for blockers, finds him. And now he gets injured. Oh my God, man. Need some better prep going into these games with the good old training staff, because we're seeing players drop left and right. That'll bring in Terrence Presley, the rookie out of San Diego State. 
So not to Deuce Vaughn. Presley not going to get anywhere. He was the uh, Cowboys' third round pick. Of course, not in real life. He's auto-generated in this franchise. And we got him back in third down again. And it has to be zone. Zone is going to be the look. Prescott changing the play around. Go ahead, buddy. I'm staying true to what I called. He's got three, three wide receivers over there to the left. And he's going to opt to go to the right. And that is going to be a nice. There's Deuce Vaughn. Okay. So the five foot six man was in to pick up five yards and a big first down. Going to stick with. I want one guy blitzing at least. We're going to go with that for a while. John Allen. You mean to tell me that John Allen, who is about three men put together, couldn't tackle Deuce Vaughn, who is the same size as me at five, six? Really? Really? Okay. I guess that's what we're going with today, right? So fresh set of down somehow, some way. Hayward blitzing and oh, CD Lamb. He dropped it because Emmanuel Forbes was right there. And I'm telling you, I forget who punched him in the mouth earlier. Someone did. Someone punched him. And I'm glad they did because that has really, really, I think that set him off. I think that set him off on, on this game. He's been playing great coverage. And that could be a pick. It is. Your interception leader in the NFL now has 10 double digits. And that was a high degree of difficulty. Forbes caught that right on the sideline, right on the sideline. He was looking for CD lamb who cannot get it going in this game at all. And Forbes just literally took it away from him. Got the feet down too. Our defensive MVP of this season. So now it's going to be Dudley for as long as humanly possible. Dudley, space on the outside. His good day continues. He's at 105 now, of course, with those two touchdowns. And if I can just, if we can run this thing out with our running backs, whether it be Dwight Jackson or Dudley Saxon, doesn't matter. How about one of the strangest comebacks that I've seen in quite a while? It was it, things were looking dark there for a while. I realized the game is not over yet, but if we can run this clock out and win, I will just be ecstatic. Dwight Jackson powering through. And that one is going to take us to the two minute warning. All right, Dudley, this game is yours, brother. I'm putting it in your hands and just asking you to lead us to the promised land. I believe he's up for the task. Look at Dudley fine increases, forcing the Cowboys to call a timeout. You love to. See it? And we got two more chance. First down ends this. First down ends this. So we got two more chances to make that happen. We're really hoping that we can. And it's going to be du the Dudley Show. It is going to be the Dudley Show. And that might do it right there, guys. Game is not over, I realize. But we're going to force the Cowboys to use their last time out on this play. And barring something crazy like a fumble, I got to switch to conservative as well. Cowboys get a free timeout. That should be a clock runoff, but it's not going to be because Madden is stupid. But still, I think we got this. Ball game Sentinels. How? How? Why? Who? What? When? Where? We made two quarter. We look, we benched a quarterback because he threw three picks. Brought in a quarterback who I saw for about five minutes, and I'm like, no. Brought the quarterback again back who threw three picks and ended up winning this game. I mean, what a crazy, crazy scenario. Mike McCarthy probably going to litter his Gatorade cup on our field. Let's see if he does. Okay, good. A lot of coaches come in here, get mad, and start littering, you know, throwing stuff on my field. I don't like that. Mike McCarthy a little bit more respected than that, but 28-24. The Cowboys had 21 points in the first quarter, or I think it was all in the first quarter, I believe. If not, it was first quarter, you know, early into the second. But Pres Prescott did play good, had that one pick to Forbes. I mean, don't even need to look at this. Four interceptions, but Sam Howell <laughs> gonna get the win. I said if he got us the win, I would extend his contract, so there you go. I mean, Dudley really, you know, he played great. 124, two touchdowns. Dwight Jackson only had three carries. Tony Pollard got hurt. Uh, our receivers, McLaurin was our leader. He played well. George Williams, I mean, we didn't really have too much going in the receiving game. Curtis Samuel, okay. But this is what won us the game right here, man. Four TFLs for Justin Hayward. Four TFLs for John Allen. Two for Cam Curl. 
couple big sacks in there as well from Hayward and Davis. And, of course, the big interception from Forbes. I just can't believe we won that game, guys. I cannot believe we won that game. But we did. I have to check next episode. But that may, depending on what the Falcons and the Seahawks did, I really hope that that secured the number one seed for us so I can just rest our starters. Don't want to see Ford or Saxton or anybody like that get injured. Chase Young gets an upgrade. Not sure why he hasn't done really anything so far this season. We'll go speed rusher. He's very good. And in Chase's defense, I drop him out in coverage a lot because that's just kind of the style that I play. He'll get plus two to finesse, so that is good. We swept the Cowboys in this series. That was a great job all around, except for the picks. You could see how demoralized they were. Yeah, I think that they were, if I was the coach after a performance like that, I would be demoralized as well. And we got plus 15 morale for all of our players, which is actually huge because morale can boost the upgrades and we're going into the playoffs. We're going into the playoffs. So we need all the upgrades we can get. Our offensive line gonna get an upgrade too. We didn't get sacked that much but, oh, at all. We didn't get sacked at all. Back-to-back -back games without allowing a sack. And that has to be something uh, earning those big guys up for a ton of praise. So now our offensive line earned 10,000 XP. So we got all the juices flowing heading into the postseason, guys. You will know by the start of uh, next episode if we are going to play the Giants in week 18 or if we are going to be or if we're going to be, yeah, playing in the playoffs, either a first round buy, buy or not. We lost our punter, though, Tress Way, um, and our center, Ricky Stromberg, backup center. He plays guard, I think. But got to go sign a punter. Don't want to see Joey Sly out there punting the ball. But lots to digest and a lot to look forward to. Make sure you tune in the next episode. But that is going to do it for me tonight, guys, as always. I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.